So far, we've looked at all kinds of transformations of the unit square, right? And we can take the unit square and we can rotate it, or we can have it do a backflip over the origin and squish it out and have it do a flip as it uh, does it. But everything that we've done so far with the unit square, you might have noticed that corner of the unit square is tied to the origin. One thing that we haven't done that we would really like to be able to do, seems pretty basic if you're talking about computer graphics, is just move it. Not even change the size, just shift it over two and up three or something. And we haven't been able to do that so far. And let's take a little bit of a look at why. Why can't we just add three to the x coordinates? So let's imagine your transformation matrix, whatever it is. And let's say I would like that. Uh, you know, what I'd really like is it to just turn into, into that. Right? I'd like all the x-coordinates to be three bigger than they were before. Uh, but notice what happens just in general, whatever a, b, c, d you have here, when you multiply this out, that's uh, ax plus by in the top, and cx plus dy on the bottom, and I think you can see the problem here. We could certainly, if we want x plus 3 on the top, I could certainly make a be 1. But even getting a plus 3 here isn't really possible. Whatever you're adding on to x is going to get scaled by how big y is. And then that's also going to do something to the y coordinates down here. So we just don't quite have the flexibility that we need to just shift the x-coordinates by 3. So we're going to have to get a little more creative. So it's time to get shifty. Let's introduce something called homogeneous coordinates. So homogeneous coordinates are still 2D coordinates, but they actually use three entries. Homogeneous coordinates look like this, x, y, 1. Uh, the 1 is always 1, and it's not graphed. So let's just say that's... Um, so you just understand and you write your code uh, to have three entries, but that third one's always 1 and not, not used for the graphing. Let's see how that helps us out. Uh, so now instead of having a 2 by 2 over here, we're going to have a 3 by 3. I'm starting with an identity matrix. And let me just put an H here and a K there. Now let's see what happens. when we multiply that out. Notice, uh, so uh, column here times the first row, that'll be x, 0, y, plus h. So x plus h. This column, this vector, times the second row. That'll be 0, x, 1, y, plus k, and 0, 0, 1. So we'll get one at the bottom. Uh, and ta-da, there we go. We have the ability to shift x and y at the same time if we want to. So we could shift three to the right and two down or whatever we wanted with the appropriate choices of h and k. Um, I'd like to point out, in addition to this, if you still want to do some other transformation, that can go right here. Uh, the only reason I had 1001 in there is I didn't want to do any other changes. But if you also want to slap in a shear transformation or a rotation, those can still get stuck in that spot. 
Okay, um, so that's good for trans uh, for transformations with homogeneous coordinates. Uh, we'll do an example a little bit later, but I just wanted to reinforce the idea of combining various transformations. Uh, the book had a nice example. I thought this is example six out of the book. They're using homogeneous coordinates here. So they say find the three by three matrix that corresponds to the transformation of a scaling by 0.3. So keep my scaling just means multiply. So uh, multiplying the x and y coordinates by 0.3. Also a rotation of 90 degrees about the origin. We know how to do rotations. Uh, matter of fact, if you uh, don't remember rotations, that's this little guy, right? This cosine, negative sine thing. Uh, rotation 90 degrees about the origin. And finally, a translation. So translation means just shift, just move. Uh, that adds uh, negative one-half to the x-coordinates and two to the y-coordinates. Um, okay, so we know how to do each one of those individually. All right, if we just want to do that scaling by 0.3, that would mean multiply the 1, 0 by 0.3 and the 0, 1 by 0.3. And those, again, go right... Uh, let's get on the right layer. <laughs> those, again, go right there, right? Any of our normal old two-dimensional transformations go in that part for homogeneous coordinates. Um, the rotation by 90 degrees, uh, again, keep in mind we're technically using this. We're filling in 90 degrees, or pi over 2, for those of you that prefer radians. Uh, in for the angle here, so you'd say cosine 90 degrees is 0, um, sine of 90 degrees is 1, so fill in your zeros and your 1s here. Uh, that's where they end up getting these. Uh, these Right there. Uh, so there's your rotation. And then your shift, your translation, lives over here on this side. Uh, so you get these three different transformations. And we want to do them in this order, right? So we want to scale first then rotate. So notice they've put the scaling right here and then they're tacking on the rotation after that. Then you've got the previous two, the scaling and the rotation and tacking on the translation. And they just multiply the three of them together and finally you get one final transformation that does all three of those things. Um, Notice like the shift is still just sitting right there. The scaling and the rotation kind of combine to make something a little bit different right in there. And they've got their little graphics over here and say here's the original, say a triangle, and then you scale it down by 0.3 and it gets that much smaller and then you rotate it and then you finally shift it. A uh, little bit to the left, negative 0.5 to the left, and 2 up. And I do want to point out again that if you did these things in a different order, uh, you would get a different result. Suppose that you wanted to translate first, and then rotate, and then scale. Uh, I think you can imagine or see graphically that that does something else, depending on how good your visualization skills are. Uh, I'll just point out numerically, if you do them, shift, then rotation, then scaling, uh, you get something different here. And the, the shift numbers aren't visible in the final result, right? It's a different result because it does different things. Um, okay, so the very last type of transformation that we want to talk about in this section is a perspective scaling and we will look at that in the last video.